Understanding the business model helps us calculate income. However, you'll notice from the title of this chapter, cash, not income, is king. We still need to adjust our net income to get free cash flow. Cash flow versus income isn't just semantics. It has practical implications. As investing mogul Warren Buffett said in his 1980 letter to shareholders, however attractive the earnings numbers, we remain leery of businesses that never seem able to convert such pretty numbers into no strings attached cash. In 2004, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos made the same point in his letter to shareholders. He provided an example which we will explore in the exercises. The discrepancy between income and cash comes down to a few key issues. The first is timing. As we discussed, income is recognized on the accrual basis as it is earned. In contrast, cash is recognized as it is received. These two things can differ when we think about buying on credit or entering into long-term contracts. As we will see in the next chapter, when cash is actually received is important because only then can we use it for other purposes. Another way to think about this is in terms of scope. As we learned with depreciation, an income statement will account for large capital investments by allocating the cost over the investment's life. But what if we are looking at a one-year income statement after making a 10-year investment? With straight-line depreciation, the income statement includes only 10% of our investment outflow. Naturally, the next question is how do we move from net income to cash flow. This requires a few more financial calculations. The first is the simplest, add back depreciation. Before, we learned that depreciation distributes the cost of a long-lived asset over its lifetime. However, for cash flow, we only want to think about when we actually spent that money. By adding depreciation back to net income, we eliminate this fake, or at least incorrectly timed, cost. The same reasoning would apply to amortization as well. What's the point of subtracting depreciation expense just to add it back in? This is needed because taxes are generally calculated after earnings are reduced by depreciation. However, we cannot ignore the cash required to make those big ticket investments. Instead, we introduce a new line item called capital expenditure, or CAPEX for short. This line item represents large capital investments at the time their purchase and the associated cash outflow actually occurred. Of course, projects don't just consume long-term resources. They also consume short-term resources like supplies. When the purchase of such resources is not timed with its use, there is once again a timing discrepancy between when these items appear in the net income on the accrual basis versus a cash flow statement based on when the purchase actually happened. For example, we might purchase inventory months before selling it or grow our accounts receivable by letting customers buy on credit. We account for this by adding changes to net working capital back to net income. 
This is the short-term analog both for adding back depreciation and subtracting capital expenditure. Then, voila! We finally reach cash flow. Still not convinced that net income wouldn't have sufficed? Well, don't take it from me. In the next two exercises, we will step through an example from the Amazon Foundation.